Sharks might be the world's oldest superheroes. Don't believe me? Well, think about this. Sharks started to evolve over 400 million years ago. That is indeed older than the dinosaurs, but beyond that, it's older than trees. So when I say old, I mean old. Today, there are over 500 species of sharks in our oceans working tirelessly to keep our marine ecosystems healthy and balanced. They really are the heroes that we need. Now, of course, they needed some specialized adaptations, or as I like to call them, superpowers, in order to do so. So, let's take a quick look at seven seriously spectacular superpowered sharks. Up first, we have the epaulette shark. These precious little sharks are one of my personal favorites. They live in coastal environments and eat lots of crunchy benthic or bottom-dwelling invertebrates like worms, crabs, and shrimp. Mm, shrimp. Because of this diet, these sharks are most active during low tides. Just think about it. It's the best time for them to try and find prey. The water is low, there's no place for the invertebrates to escape, and it's the perfect opportunity for them to go on the prowl for a midnight snack. I too am a big fan of midnight snacks. The problem is, because they're so active during low tide, they often find themselves trapped in an area with little to no water. But have no fear, tiny fins are here! I say trapped because they aren't really stuck there. They can get themselves out of these predicaments pretty easily, actually. They use their pectoral and pelvic fins to, in a way, walk over rocks and coral reefs and into small tide pools to look for food and get a literal breather from the lack of oxygen they just experienced for being out of the water for so long. If you look at their little pelvic and pectoral fins, it really does look like they're walking. Maybe waddling is the right term? Either way, fish out of water typically doesn't describe something good, but for these sharks, it's pretty much a real life superpower. So while an epaulette shark can, in a way, walk on land, our next shark's power has to do with not really moving at all. So let's talk about the wobbegong shark. There are a few different species of wobbegong sharks, aka carpet sharks, and I personally think that they're named very well. They do indeed look like shag carpeting. And this shag carpet look is probably a better superpower than you might think. It gives them the power of invisibility! Wobbegongs are ambush hunters, so they lay waiting for prey to get close enough to them, and when they do get close enough, they pounce! Kind of like when your cat is waiting for you to walk around the corner so they can attack your ankles. Of course, wobbegong sharks need fantastic camouflage to hide literally in plain sight, so the patterns and colors on their skin mimic the corals and rocks that they lay on, creating the perfect disguise. And let's talk a little bit about these tassels on the end of their face, because it's not just for style. Though, you gotta admit, it's a pretty stylish mustache. They look like the schnauzers of the sea. These tassels also help the sharks blend in. They give smaller fish a sense of security, but little do they know they're about to become a delicious snack. So while we may think of their cloak of invisibility as an incredible superpower, I doubt every fish is going to agree with that. But hey, everyone's gotta eat. The wobbegong may copy its surroundings, but the horn shark likes to copy another species. The horn shark is a rather small shark, and I think that they're absolutely adorable, but I doubt that the poor Jackson shark is going to agree with that. While many sharks give birth to live young, the poor Jackson puts loads of energy into producing eggs. These eggs are really cool because they're shaped like corkscrews, making them perfect for wedging away into hidden crevices and away from predators. But the crested horn shark is gonna try to make sure that all that time and energy was for absolutely nothing. Why? For reasons you might not expect. The crested horn shark looks eerily similar to the Port Jackson shark, making it difficult to tell friend from foe. This power of mimicry allows the crested horn shark to infiltrate Port Jackson shark territory, searching for eggs to steal. Though they look really similar, the crested horn shark is actually one of the most common predators of Port Jackson shark eggs. But like I said before, everyone's gotta eat. Man, I bet the phrase keep your friends close and your enemies closer really hits home for the Port Jackson shark. The shark may be on the smaller end of the sharky size spectrum, but we're about to jump straight to the largest. 
The whale shark is not only the largest shark, but the largest fish on the entire planet. They can grow to be 12 meters long and weigh up to 20 metric tons. What? Imagine a school bus that can swim. That is exactly why the whale shark superpower is super size. As you might expect, a shark this big needs a lot of food to maintain its size. But the way this shark feeds its supersized body is pretty surprising. They're actually filter feeders. That's right, the largest fish in the sea feeds on plankton, some of the smallest organisms in the ocean, just like some whales do. So I guess the name whale shark is pretty fitting, wouldn't you say? They tend to feed at the surface, but they can also dive pretty deep too, down to about a thousand meters, and I wish so badly that I could do the same thing. And these gentle giants can migrate huge distances in search of food as well. Anything to feed those gigantic bodies. Now, I would love to know which whale shark friend I'm waving to if I happen upon one on a dive. Well, good news. You see those gorgeous polka dots along their body? Well, those patterns are as unique to each whale shark as fingerprints are to humans. So, if you get a good enough picture, it might just help you identify which record-setting, super-sized friend you found. From a tropical giant to the big boys of below zero, it's time to talk about our good friend, the Greenland shark. The five meter long Greenland shark lives in a place you might not expect to find a shark, the Arctic. Up north, the water is frigid, so you can't expect them to move very fast. In fact, nothing they do is very fast. Every aspect of their life history seems to be in super slow mo. They only swim about two miles per hour, and they only grow up to one centimeter every year, which is half the growth rate of Mount Everest. Yeah, a literal mountain grows faster than the Greenland shark, so it's really hard to imagine what doesn't grow faster than the Greenland shark. All this slow and prolonged life history gives them the power of immortality. Kind of. I mean, compared to other vertebrates. The Greenland shark is actually thought to be the oldest living vertebrate species on the planet. Using radiocarbon dating on the tissues in their eyeballs, scientists have been able to estimate how old Greenland sharks can actually live. Our oldest estimate right now is a female shark that's anywhere between 272 and 512 years old. But let's take an average and just assume she was around 400. That means this shark was likely alive at the same time as Alexander Hamilton and when the musical about his life was written. She was probably even around before then when the Mayflower left England and sailed to Massachusetts in the early 1600s. So think twice before you call your grandmother old because she's got nothing on the Greenland shark. These sharks live longer than any of us humans could ever possibly wish to live, and they spend all of those years just swimming slowly, wandering around the Arctic in search of snacks. I'm curious to know what you would do with 400 years, because honestly, I might also just look for snacks. Now, if you're swimming as slow as a Greenland shark, you're probably not going fast enough to take flight. So, it's a good thing our next animal has a little bit more speed on its side. But this next shark isn't a shark. It's actually a ray. A mobular ray, to be specific. Isn't that cheating, you might ask? Kind of, but not entirely. While sharks and rays are indeed different animals, they're very closely related. So, to put it simply, the main difference is that sharks have a long, thin body, like a sausage, and rays are flattened like a pancake. Does that make anybody else want breakfast food? Just me? While both sharks and rays are in a group called elasmobranchs, I like to refer to rays as our flat flat friends because their superpower is flight. Kind of. These fish gather in groups of hundreds of individuals and then they start to show off by jumping really high out of the water. How high? About six feet or nearly two meters out of the water. That's taller than me by a solid six inches. Now the thing is, we don't really know why they fly. It could be to knock external parasites off of their body. It could be for some form of communication. It could even be to attract a lovely mate. I mean, I'm sure flying would make a real splash in the dating pool. But regardless of why they jump so high, when they do so, they sure look fly. Though the mobile ray may have the speed to launch itself out of the water, no shark has speed like our last hero. The mako shark is a sleek and powerful animal, and as the fastest shark on the planet, it's no surprise that its superpower is super speed. The shark would easily win in a race against any other shark. They can reach top speeds of up to 45 miles per hour, which is a typical speed limit for the main roads in most of the places that I've lived. 
which means the top speed that you're allowed to drive in a car to the grocery store is the same as the top speed that the Mako shark can swim to catch its food. I feel so honored to have something in common with such a gorgeous animal. Now, of course, in order to swim that fast, the Mako shark needs to be literally built for speed. So let's take a look at a couple adaptations. First, they're built like a torpedo. Very hydrodynamic, perfect for swimming fast. This shark also has a very prominent keel on its tail right before that signature tail fin. I like to call this section of their tail the ankle. So the keel on their ankle helps to reduce drag, letting them cut right through the water. Something else that helps this shark reduce drag are its dermal denticles, which basically translates to skin teeth. Now, all sharks have these type of scales, but the placement and shape of these dermal denticles on the mako shark really helps streamline the water across their body, helping them zip right through it. This last adaptation is something that we humans have in common with them. They are, to an extent, warm-blooded. The structure of their blood vessels helps them retain heat more than most sharks. Why is this important? Think about it like this. If you've ever been outside in the cold rain or the snow and you try to wiggle your fingers, they're not gonna move very fast, are they? But once you start to warm them up, your fingers can move a little bit faster. It's the same kind of idea with these sharks. They need their muscles to be warm in order to swim fast enough to catch their prey. With all these adaptations, super speed, in a very literal sense, comes quite naturally to the Mako shark. These seven sharks gave you just a sneak peek at all the real life superheroes we have in our oceans today. Sharks have evolved over millions of years and are perfectly designed for the roles they serve in our ecosystems. So be sure to thank our sharky superheroes because no one's really sure what the world would look like without them.